uh, we've been looking at uh, the Holy Trinity, uh, we've been looking at the content and the different aspects of the Holy Trinity. We saw uh, God the Holy Spirit, we saw God the Son, and today I wanted to unpack uh, God the Father, uh, the first person of the Holy Trinity, the first person of the Godhead, uh, the God the Father. Who is this God the Father? What is his nature? What is his character? What are his attributes? How we can able to, to have a better understanding uh, of the word, especially God the Father, and how we can able to fall in love with him so that we can able to see God is at work. The Bible reminds us that God is at work and He invites us to partner with, his, with Him. So today, it's an opportunity for us to partner with God and to see how God is going to transform our lives, how God is going to change our lives. And again, it's a joy and a privilege to be able to connect. We have been seeing that God is in the business of revealing Himself. God is in the business of uh, uh, helping us to connect with Him and uh, creating opportunities for us to know. We know that in the past that God has revealed himself through creation. We have seen that God in the past God has revealed himself through prophets. We have seen that God has revealed himself through the scriptures. And the Bible reminds us as supremely and finally God reminds, uh, God reveals himself to us in the person of Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is a God embodiment, is a is the exact image of God and he wanted to uh, give us the insight what God is like and again we wanted to focus on those thoughts today and again uh, the Bible reminds us that uh, the God of the uh, Bible is so relevant and is the first person of the Trinity and God the Father being the uh, initiator we have seen uh, from the past that God initiates God relates and God creates and God in initiates in the first step uh, process that he takes the first step for us that we can understand the God's word and uh, please note when we talk about the Trinity uh, when we read the Holy uh, Bible when we read the Holy Bible we read in two sections we have Old Testament and we have New Testament but God never intended us to read the Bible in, in uh, two sections, two separate sections, Old Testament and the New Testament. Rather, God wanted to reveal a progressive revelation, a progressive way to reveal himself to us so that we can see God in a big context, in a big picture. We've seen in the Old Testament, God the Father, our God, first person of the Trinity, God the Father actively leading, guiding, directing the children of Israel. And we have seen that God is so powerful and continues to communicate. But in the in, in the Matthew chapter 1, God talks about, and when God uh, speaks, and when God chooses to reveal himself in the Matthew, there are no distinct deity. There is another, there is not another deity. There is not another God, but the same God from the Old Testament is the same God. We see the continuation working of God. When we read the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation, we would see the story of God the Father. We see the story of God the Son. We see the story of God the Holy Spirit and how the redemption plan is being uh, packed together, how we can able to celebrate. We would see that very clearly. The Bible is interesting, the word it talks about, especially when we talk about uh, God has been always existed. Uh, in the, from the Old Testament, we would read from Genesis chapter one, verse one, we would say in the beginning, God, in the beginning, God, nothing else rather, God the Father existed uh, from the beginning. And when he's existed, especially is interesting, uh, I wanted to show some Bible verses today. We wanted to get a grasp of it. The Bible reminds us that uh, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your intellect. But one, I wanted to pause and ask ourselves, how do we love the God? How do we uh, adore him, worship him, personalize and uh, praise him? Because the more we know about God, the better we are able to fall in love. The more we know about God's revelations, the more we know about God's um, attributes and nature and character, the more we know we would uh, fall in love with him. The Lord desires to communicate. The Lord desires to intersect our lives and he's interested to speak to each one of us. 
He is interested in our individual lives. He is interested to partner with us in a way that we can able to understand God in a very special way. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 31 I would read, God saw that all he had made and it was very good. I wanted to pause right there and to give you an insight that God saw that all he had made and it was good. I wanted to pause and to give you the nature, character of God is that God is a good God and he makes it good. He never act contrary to his nature. He always does good because of the very core, because of the very being, the central to his being is that, is that he's a good God. A good God always acts good. We always see his creation is good because Genesis chapter 1 verse 31 we will read that God saw all that he had made and it was good. God makes good things. God continues to make good things because God never ceased doing good things because when God starts to do new things, he is interested to do new things. God is about to do something new thing in our lives. And the thing I wanted to ask you is, are you ready for it? God desires to do something significant. God desires to do something good in your life because the very core of God the Father is there is goodness. God is a good God and he does good things and continues to do. And the second verse I wanted to uh, focus here today is that Genesis chapter 12 verse uh, 7 we will read that in the book of Genesis we would see the covenant of God. Here we see a family, uh, Abraham and his wife Sarai. And uh, they were living in Canaan and again uh, they were living among idolaters. The Bible t uh, gives that information to us. And please note, Abram was not looking for God. Abram was not praying. He was not seeking. He was not interceding. He was not desperately looking for God to... To, to find a purpose or meaning, but rather he was doing his own stuff. He was continuing with his own life. Things were going fine and there was no connection whatsoever. There was no intersection between God and Abram. But in Genesis chapter 12, we will read that God in his sovereign wisdom, in his sovereign plan, God takes initiative. God appears to Abraham. I want you to pause right there. God takes initiative and God appears. Let me read uh, the Genesis chapter 12 verse 7. We read, God appeared to Abraham. God literally appeared to Abraham. Today, some of you may be busy with your careers, busy with your school, busy with your home life, busy with your traveling, busy with your shopping, all those things. But God is interested to appear. God is interested to, to come into your life and to make himself known. God desires to reveal himself to us. And it is interesting when God appeared to Abraham and then conversation continues, we would see the great covenant of God. The God's covenant is being revealed in the scriptures. And especially if you were to read that part today. So my point here today is God the Father he is relational. God the Father is a creator. God the Father, he takes initiative. Abraham was not looking for God. Abraham was not praying for God. Abraham was not seeking God, but rather God takes initiative and God appears to Abraham. The same God whom we have saw in the Old Testament is the same God who revealed himself in the New Testament, is the same God who is interested to intersect into our lives. And if we were to partner with him or if we were to connect with him. And my point today is God has a good news. Today I have come into your home with the good news because God is interested to show up. God is interested to appear in your family. Imagine a family of God being part of your family. He is a listener at every conversation. He, inter uh, he involves in everything. God provides, God sustains, God is part of the life and he makes things beautiful because in Genesis we saw everything God does, he does only good things and God is interested to do something new and significant part. We have seen that God initiates and God appears.